Amen. How many of you are glad that Jesus is in this room? Amen. You may be seated this morning. Hey, we're so glad that you're here today at City Church. And uh, God is doing awesome things. And how many of you are ready for the kids to go back to school? Oh, man, y'all didn't seem to. Anybody ready for the kids to go back to school? Yeah. How many of you need structure? Man, I just... Man, I need, you know, I just, I got to have the structure in the house. You know what I'm saying? I got to, I look forward to the moments where everybody is, everybody is gone and I can just blare my 80s and drink my coffee and just get hyped up, walk in circles and say, thank you, God, I got a quiet house. You know what I'm saying? I'm looking forward to it. And, uh, but I'm glad that you're here and I'm glad that you guys enjoyed your summer. How many of you have had a great summer? Had some time to just kind of recoup? Yep. Y'all, all I've done all summer is just ride the roads, you know, transporting, you know, back and forth, picking people up from airports, you know, just every, all over the place. And so I'm really looking forward to just fall coming and just kind of getting settled in and, uh, and getting everybody back here at the church. Everybody's getting it in. You got a couple more weeks to get it in. And, uh, and then hopefully everybody will be back. <laughs> just pray for your pastor. I'm staying encouraged, though. It's going to be a good. Uh, the, today we're starting a new sermon series called Reset. Reset, reset. How many of you know that sometimes in life we get lax? We get a little comfortable in our walk with God. We get a little comfortable. We get, you know, we once were fired up a little bit. Not Maybe not like me, but you were once fired up and you just kind of, you know, slowly have just kind of drifted off maybe. Or, or, or maybe you're just like, I'm just not feeling church. I'm just not feeling God the way I used to feel him. And so I thought, you know, why does it have to be a first of the year kind of thing where we say, let's reset. We need to reset right now. Some of you are like, yeah, I need this. I need this. I need to reset. I'm not been where I need to be with God right now. I need to reset, Pastor Dana. And so you've come to the right place today. And over the next few weeks, we're going to look at how, what does that look like? And I thought, you know, where do I even begin today? There's so many ways we could reset. And I thought, you know what? How can we reset if we don't have our thinking straight? If we don't get our thought life straight? So I thought I'd start there today. And you can look at your neighbor and say, I'm glad I came today. Yeah, you don't have to do it out loud if you don't want to. Just kind of hit them. A uh, couple of different passages I'll be looking at today. Uh, Romans chapter 8, verse 5. And then 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3 through 5. Are you ready? Say, let's go. Let's go. Those who live according to the flesh have their minds set on what the flesh desires. But those who live in accordance with the Spirit, have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. Okay, what are you trying to say, Pastor Dana? 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through 5. For though we live in the world, we do not wage war the way the world does. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish. Some of you need to demolish some things today. That's keeping you up at night. Demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sells itself up against the knowledge of God. Check this out. And we take what? We take captive every thought. Not some thoughts. Not one thought. Every thought to make it obedient to Christ. So I want to talk today on the subject of you got to make up your mind. Make up your mind. Let's pray again. Don't you love it? We're praying church. Let's go. God, I just thank you for this opportunity to bring forth your word. And God, I I just thank you for the opportunity to to just minister to these people who decided today on this hot, sunny day that they weren't going to the beach. They were coming to church. And so today, Lord, bless them. Bless their effort, God. They're here because they want to learn about you. They're here because they need encouragement. They're here, God, because they're up against something that looks really big, and they don't know what to do. And, Lord, I pray for them today. I pray for peace that surpasses all understanding. God, do what you need to do and shake our mind up because, Lord, how many of you know the battle is in our minds? So today, God, we come against any battle is there, and we want to set our minds and our thoughts on you. In Jesus' name, and everybody said amen. Amen. I'm telling my age, but that's okay. I'm proud of who I am. I'm proud that I will be 48 years old in October. My birthday's coming, y'all. But I ain't 50 yet, praise God. Uh, But anyway, I'm showing my age, but I want to tell you that I grew up with my brothers playing Atari. How many of you had an Atari when you were little? Yeah, 
Yeah, Atari was, was amazing. And there were so many games that I played. Like, I love Pac-Man. Any Pac-Man lovers in the house? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What about Frogger? Oh, yeah, yep. Yeah. Um, Frogger, it was awesome. And boy, we thought we had died and gone to heaven in the Bunning household when we got the Nintendo. I mean, we got Nintendo, that was it. I mean, we were just so excited. The only problem was there was one Nintendo and there was four of us kids. And, uh, and so it was, you know, it was, it was first come, first serve, whoever could get there first. And then I never liked it when I came into school and all my brother's friends were there. Well, I did like it because they were cute. But, but I didn't like it because they were all on the Nintendo playing RBI baseball and yelling and screaming on the top of their heads. And one particular day, I went to go play the Nintendo, and my, one of my brothers was there, and he's like, oh, I'm playing RBI baseball. You want to you wanna join me? And I'm like, I don't. Uh, sure, I guess. I mean, it wasn't my pick. I like Super Mario Brothers, right? Well, or Mike Tyson's Punch Out. That was my jam. So I was like, yeah, yeah, sure. So I sit down and we start playing. And the problem is, he liked to tease me a lot. And, um, and so he started really going on. Like every time he would walk a man on base, you know, he would be like, oh, yeah, woo, you know, and he'd like rub it in. And then he's like, oh, I scored. Oh, look, you haven't even got to first base yet. And he just kept saying things over and over again to me. And I thought, you know what? I got a choice here. I need to make up my mind. Something's got to happen. I thought, I can either continue and let him tease me, okay? Um, I can get up and walk away from this game and say, I, I quit. I'm not playing anymore. But then I would never hear the end of that. He would just tease me, like, to all, you know, go on about it forever. But then I remembered that I, those cute boys that used to come to my house, um, they, they, would, they would take that cartridge out. Remember, you could do that when your game wasn't quite right or if it was acting weird. You could take the cartridge out, and you could blow on it and then stick it back in and then it would just restart the game uh, back from the beginning so I thought you know what I'm gonna act like I think that's what I'm gonna do so I made up my mind that I was gonna act like something was wrong with the game you know I'm like did you see that he's like what I'm like I don't know something's just acting weird and so I'm like I don't know why I did it but I just thought you know it's, it's a good thing to do I was the only girl in the house so I might as well just try it so I, I reached down when we were playing the game and I took the cartridge out, and I blew it. He's like, what are you doing? I'm like, you, didn't you see that like, the game was like messing up? And I blew it, and I put it back in, and it restarted the game. Like, it's just a completely different game now. And he was like, oh, you know what? Like, I don't have time to play a whole game. Like, I, I'm just going to go ahead and go do what I'm going to do. And I'm like, yes, because I made up my mind. I did what I thought I needed to do. But then I started thinking the other day, like, why did I blow on Why did I take the cartridge out and blow on it? And I think, and because that's what I thought I was supposed to do. Like, that's what I had seen other people do. So I just figured that's what I was supposed to do. And I wonder, what are, what are you doing that you just do it because that's what you think you're supposed to do? I wonder, you know, what kinds of things are you doing? Like, when it comes to your thought patterns, like, why are you thinking things because you think you're supposed to be thinking them? Maybe, maybe it's a custom thing, or maybe, maybe it's just, you're like, I don't know, like my parents raised me, like they were just, you know, they, they just thought a certain way. They did things a certain way. I, I cook like my mom because she cooks like, you know, you know, like all these things. You just do it because that's the way you thought it was supposed to be. And I feel like some of us are thinking things that we just think that's just the way it is. Like I'm just feeling this way. Because, you know, I've been thinking about this and, you know, I can think about whatever I want to think about. But I just want you to know some of you are setting the enemy up to just completely walk right in, have a seat in your thought life. And you know what I'm getting sick and tired of? Can I get going this morning? I know it's a little early. <laughs> it's the first part of my sermon. But I'm getting sick and tired of, of the enemy playing tricks in our mind and holding some of you back. As a pastor, I get frustrated because I see him holding some of you back and keeping you hostage in your past, keeping you hostage in your depression, in your anxiety, in your doubt, in your worry. And some people aren't even here today. You know why? Because the enemy played tricks with their mind and told them things like this. Why are you getting up and going to church today? Well, why, why are you going to do that? They, it's not going to get any better. Why don't you just stay home? You don't need to hear her anyway. She gets on my nerves because she's always so hyper. I, I just don't really feel like listening to her today because I had a rough night last night, and, you know, I got a headache, and I don't really feel like being in here today, and she's being all hyper or whatever the case may be. But I want you to know that's, that's a lie from the enemy. And he's keeping us as believers 
He's trying to hold us down and keep us back from the plans and the purpose that God has for us. And some of you are just sitting there letting him feed you with a bunch of mess. And you're wondering why, well, I just have a great life, you know, externally God's been good and he's blessed me. Yeah, but, but I just have this feeling internally, like I don't know what it is. Could it be what you're thinking? Because your thinking is more powerful. Your mind is very powerful, y'all. And your life follows what you're thinking. It, it follows. You might not think that, but if you don't feel right, it's because of your feelings, which comes from what you are thinking. What you're thinking. And I feel like we're just sitting back sometimes. I mean, I'm guilty of it too. And I've, I've just got so sick and tired of it lately. It's like, you know what? I don't have to listen to this mess. Like, what? Like, why am, I, why am I letting him just come in and tell me all kinds of mess? You know why? Because he doesn't want me to succeed in life. He doesn't want you to succeed. He doesn't want you to be blessed and highly favored. He doesn't want your kids to have a good school year. Come on. He doesn't want any of those things. So all these people are walking around, I feel like, just, just letting him play with our minds. But, but I, you know, I'm a, if you haven't tell, if you can't tell, I'm a fighter. Somebody tells me I can't do something, man, you better watch out. Boy, I'm going to do it ten times harder, right? I'm just, that's who I am. And I, and I feel like that's the way we need to be. If we love God and we want God's blessings, then why do we just open the door and just let him come on in and tell you all kinds of stuff? That's not what God wants you to listen to. So why can't we fight back? I, I, I think many of us don't. We just live in it, and we just go with the flow, and we feel like that's just the way it's supposed to be. But it's not the way it's supposed to be. We can fight back. You know what? You know what I see all the time? I see people fighting over, man, people fighting over parking places. My goodness. People fighting over. I've seen people, man, I've been on the highway so much, man, I'm burning up the mileage on my car. But I'm going to tell you what. I'm in the car everywhere. People don't mind cutting you off. People fighting, man, they, man, they're fighting over their lane, fighting over what they think is theirs. And they fight over their kids. Somebody, somebody mess with your kids, man, you're like, well, hold up, snap, let's go, right? Don't, don't you mess with my kids, right? We get fired up at Chick-fil-A. Went to Chick-fil-A yesterday. That place is a zoo, y'all. It's a zoo. 11 o'clock. I thought, oh, it'll be fine. We'll go. Jenna's like, Mom, I said, I know. Let's go before the rush. Well, nowadays, I don't know when you're supposed to go because there's always a rush there in line forever everybody so what cracks me up is there's two lanes but yet everybody gets mad you pull up you pay and then you know how you go around to the next little thing window and so i'm going around this lady over here cuts me off and, and flips me off because you know i guess i went up ahead of her and i'm like look lady take a chill pill you're still getting your food it's still there it doesn't matter who goes first who goes next like you've already placed your order. But people fight over that. But why can't we do that when it comes with our thinking? Why can't we fight back to the one that's feeding us the junk and say, uh-uh, not today. I'm not listening to it today. No, I don't have to live like that. I don't have to listen to the lies. Like why can't we fight back for something like that? That's what I want to know. That's what I want to pump y'all up with today. It's time to fight. you got to get your head out. You want to know what's wrong with you? It could be you, right? It could be your own thinking that's wrong with you because we let our emotions get the best of us. Y'all don't do that, do you? You never have bad emotion. Feelings take over because of what we're thinking. We don't have to live that way. I'm going to tell you what. God loves you. And God wants you to be blessed, and he wants you to prosper, and he wants to bless your business, and he wants to bless your kids. Come on. And he wants to bless your finances. He wants to do that. So just, just because things aren't quite going the way you want them to go or you thought they would be right now in your life, what we do is we sit down and we have a pity party and we let him feed lies into our mind, into our thought life. I'm going to tell you, it's serious business right up here. What we think really matters. How many of you know that? You don't have to respond. Just come on. Yeah, it really matters. Like when you get up in the morning, like, come on, somebody. It doesn't mean that, you know, you got some of you are pouting because you got to go to work. Well, guess what? At least you have a job. Come on. There's people. Hey, everybody says they're hiring. Flat, fill out applications. You don't even get a call back. Come on. So just be grateful for the job that you have. Come on. And so these lies, he, he constantly constantly puts them in our mind and you know the problem with us is we have so many things going because we have a wandering mind some of you are tired today because you were up last night because you have a wandering mind how many of you know it starts with one thought then it goes to the next thought 
Then it goes to the next thought. Then you can't sleep. Then your heart's racing. Oh, I'm telling stories about myself. Then you're like, oh, what about this? What about this? And you wake up the next day, and you're feeling down. You're feeling blue because your mind is all over the place. But what Paul is saying here in Romans chapter 8, verse 5, he's saying it doesn't have to be that way. But it's up to you. You've got to make your mind up. He says, look, it's easy. There's two different kinds of way right here that you can set your mind. Right here, you can train your brain. This is what you got to do. So you got you to set your mind on two different things. You got to make up your mind. Are you ready? He said, the first, some of you are setting your mind on the flesh. And when you set your mind to flesh, things of this world, the hopes, your dreams, the desire, eventually, come on, are going to die. But if you set your mind on things of his spirit and, and godly things, right, you will be able to, to live in love, peace, and joy. He said, but... But it's up to you. You've got to make up your mind. See, we want the blessing. Come on, we, we, want, we say we want him, but yet we're still thinking old thoughts. We're thinking thoughts that are, are not of him. Does that mean that we won't ever stumble when we try to think and set our mind on things of him? Yeah, we're going to have times where we're not perfect, that things are going to happen. Oh, come on, somebody. I thought I lost my necklace there for a minute. And things are going to happen. But at the same time, we've got to understand that we've, we've got to get in his word every single day, that we've got to fight back. We don't have to listen to that. We don't have to live that way. We need to make up our mind. What are you going to set your mind on? So how do we do this? I thought you never asked. Because I'm a three-pointer kind of person we're going to start with number one remove remove we need to remove any kind of faults that should not be in our mind we've got to get rid of them we got to remove them you know it reminds me our thoughts kind of remind me of like when you watch youtube um and i I, i'm on it a lot and i watch i have like worship music playing in the morning if i'm not playing my 80s um i got worship music playing and before i got the door and then i'm constantly Everybody's like, well, how do you feed yourself? Like, how do you get fed? Because I constantly have pastors playing on repeat all the time. Wherever I go, in my car, every time I get in, it's a leadership podcast. It's, it's some, kind of, some kind of God's word going in me, right? And so I'm constantly listening to it. And so anyway, when you're, when you're watching YouTube, how many of you know that sometimes those ads pop up? Like, it's like, really? Like, I'm just trying to watch what's on YouTube. So the ads pop up. Right? And and we're watching the ads and we're trying to click on, what are we going to click on here? And so you have to look for what? You have to look for the X so you can X out of the thing that has popped up on your screen. And, And see, I want you to know that's the same thing we need to do with our thoughts and our thought life is we can't control when they pop up, but we can control if we're going to sit there and listen to it. Right, so, so we need to look for the X. And how many of you know that sometimes things pop up and you can't find the X? You're like, oh, where's the X? Where's the X? Oh, it's got to be here. It's like this tiny little X. Like, you know, and you're like trying to click on it. You're clicking on all these wrong things, right, trying to get out of it. And I want you to know sometimes it's hard. Sometimes it's hard to find the X. But God will give you what you need in the time that you need it. He's saying just Click out of, just exit out of, be careful what you're taking in. Be careful. You need to exit out of it. So whatever kinds of things pop up, you can't control it, but you can exit out of it. So I just want you to know that whatever thought comes up that you know is not of God, get rid of it. Exit out of it. You know, it's just like when my kids were little and they would get in trouble and we tried the whole time out thing. That's kind of a joke, isn't it? I mean, my parents, we just... Back in the day, man, it was just the belt. You know what I'm saying? It was just, you know, you know, and back in the, before that, some of you, they go out and get you a little branch off the tree, you know, get you, a little, you know what I'm saying? Hey, and I just, you know, I was not, I didn't grow up with no time out. wish we did. <laughs> it wasn't like that back in the day, you know, but, but raising my kids, everybody did time out. You know, go in time out. No, you go in time out. No, no, you go in time out. Set the timer. Now you stay there until I get back, you know, don't you move, you know. And, and, and I, I got thinking about what about the toxic thoughts that come in our mind? How about we put them in timeout? How about not just for five minutes, not for 10 minutes, but how about we put them in timeout forever? How about when worry tries to overtake us that we simply say, uh-uh, not now. You need to go back in that corner to timeout. How about we start getting so brave and we fight so much that when fear wakes us up in the middle of the night, we say, uh-uh, you need to go back to timeout. Some of you don't need to even think about it, right? You need to start talking to it and say, uh-uh, not today. I want to remove that from myself. 
It's like me, 21 days of prayer and fasting in January. I'm like, all right. Not only do I try to give up my sweets, but I say, you know, I ain't definitely ain't giving up my coffee. But I was like, you know what? Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give up social media, right? But I can't keep, I can't keep Snapchat. And y'all got all of Snapchat, Instagram, Facebook, whatever. I got all of it, Twitter. And, and I can't keep that mess on my phone <laughs> because if I do, it makes it harder. So what do I need to do? I need to remove that away from my phone so I'm not tempted. Come on, some of you got some things. It's like having an alcoholic, right? Your alcoholic don't go, go hang out at the bar and have a birthday party with the alcohol sitting right there. At least I hope not. You've got to remove all the things, any opportunity to opportunity that you have to think the things that you shouldn't be thinking you need to get rid of it you need to remove it come on somebody and maybe today that's that's something for you you're like you know what I'm entertaining things I don't need to be entertaining I'm listening to things that I don't need to be listening to it's time that I start cleaning out shop and cleaning out my closet in your in your thought life clean it out clean it out some of you got some trash in there you got some things that have been on replay. You've been hitting the rewind button long enough. It's time to get rid of the mess. It's time. It's like my closet. I can always tell. I can always tell when it's time to clean it out. And, man, it ain't a good feeling when you start cleaning that mess out. Man, because that gives me a good excuse to go get something else. You know what I'm saying? No, I'm just kidding. But, anyway, I like to clean it out and get it. And it's, it's a good feeling to sort through things and get rid of it. The same thing is true in your mind. You constantly need to clean it out. If there's something that's waking you up in the middle of the night, get rid of it. Say, no, I don't have to listen to this. Get your word out. Somebody, some of you need to clean the dust up off of it. It ain't there to sit on your coffee stand so you can put your coffee on it. It's there for you to read it. It is the weapon that you need to fight the enemy. And if you can't understand why you ain't feeling right, get in the word of God and start using that weapon, the greatest weapon that we have that so many people do not use. Getting in it every single day is saying, you know what? I'm not quitting. I, I might stumble a little bit with my thinking, but I am not quitting. I am not a quitter. I will continue to search for you, God. I will continue to memorize your scripture. I will continue to put it on my heart and renew it every single day. It's getting rid of the old so that you can make room for new. And the same thing goes in our thought life. Are you all ready? Say amen. All right, let me find number two here. See, that's what happens when you don't look at your notes. All right, here's the next one. Number two, renew, renew, renew. There was a study done in 2005 that says 12, listen to this, 12 to 60,000 thoughts a day that you have. And out of them, 80% are negative. Stinking thinking is right, Don. 95% of those thoughts are thoughts that you had the day before. It's always easier to be negative than positive, isn't it? <laughs> y'all, I thought y'all would be like, yeah, preach, girl. It's easier to set your mind on the flesh versus the spirit that brings life and is holy and pleasing to God. We fall into the patterns of the world. It's easy to get up and be like, Shh, I don't want to get up today. Today is going to be a bad day. <laughs> I got a headache. I got to go to work. I got to put up with Susie at the door in the front office, you know. What would you do this weekend? I heard you went, blah, blah, blah. Well, you know what? I don't really care what you heard. I came to work. I didn't come to talk about my social life, so stop gossiping about what I do. Come on, somebody. Ah, come on. I'm just talking. I'm just trying to make up stuff that I think you guys might experience. But I'm just saying, I don't have that here with Ross. You know, he's pretty just chill. You know, we don't really talk to him. Anyway, so, so you've, got, you've got to constantly prepare yourself that, you know what, it is easier. So whatever comes natural to you, what you need to do is just say, you know what, I, I'm, I'm not going to think like that. I'm going to make up my mind that instead of going there and being negative, you know what, I'm going to have enough faith, enough mindset that I'm going to say, you know what, I'm not going to think like that. Instead, I'm going to renew myself. And in 2 Corinthians, what I read earlier, 10, 3 through 5, I talked about the word demolish, and I had you say that out loud, demolish. Some of you need to demolish some things in your thought life. 
some things that are holding you captive. Maybe it's insecurity. Maybe it's something from your past that you're struggling with because that's where the enemy really likes to fight a lot is in our past, whether it's a mistake or shame or regret or whatever or hurt. You know, that's where he likes to live. But it's, it's constantly understanding that we've got to demolish that. If we want God to renew our spirit, we've got to demolish any argument, anything that is in our mind that shouldn't be there. So I started thinking about, okay, how, how does this work? What does this look like? So the transformation of my life is connected to the renewing of my mind. So renew means to renovate. Just like a building needs to be renovated, right? You got to replace the old, worn-out structure and have fresh materials, right, to, to get it going to look like something, to renovate it. And some of you, that's, that's how your thought life is. You've had some old stuff in there for a long time, and God's saying today, you, you need to get rid of that and renew it with something new, something that's good. And when there's a renovation, sometimes there's something that gets upgraded, but then there's some things that are going to get demolished. And sometimes, I love this right here, sometimes renovation gets a little messy, y'all. In your mind, sometimes renovation requires some things that need to be demolished. And I believe today that that's where many of you are. You can't reset because you still hold on to some things. And God is saying today, it's time to demolish that. I want to do a new thing. I want to renovate your thought life. I want to do something different. But we've got to set our minds. Which way are we going to do? We've got to make up our minds. And I want you to know that you can retrain your brain. You can renew your mind by not paying attention to the world and what the world says, but what God is saying. It's every day saying, I haven't arrived to that thinking yet, Pastor Dana. But you know what? I'm not backing down. I'm not quitting. I'm renewing myself every day by setting my mind on things that are of him, right? On a God thought. That's where I want to set my mind. And the last thing today is reset. You got to reset, not resume. Reset. It's not a resume season. It's, it's a reset season. Now, I feel like I'm speaking to somebody today. It's a reset season. It's a reset. God wants to do something new in your life, right? So we got to get, we got to get our mind, we got to get our thinking back the way we need to get it thinking, right? We've got to get in the word. We've got to renew. It's like when I think of retraining the brain, I think about like when you go on a hike, right? You go down trails. Some of you like to hike. No, thanks. Not me. But anyway, you like to hike. More power to you. I hope it's great. I hope you love it. I hope you sweat, and I hope you just, you know, just wear yourself right out and go up. Yeah, I hope it's worth the beauty and the splendor that it is. And some of you are, uh, no thanks. And, and you're walking up, you're walking up these mountains, and oh, yeah, it's great, isn't it? You get to the top, come on. And you walk through these trails, and some of the trails you will find are kind of worn down, right? Because so many people have walked over it so many times that it's easy to follow, and that it's easy to walk on, it's but then there's other opportunities that are around you for other trails. But those trails are a little harder and it requires a little more effort, right? But after a while, when you keep walking on it, it'll eventually kind of, you know, come down a little bit and, and like the older trails and it flattens out and it's a little more easier to walk upon. And that's what happens after a while when you're thinking. If, at first, it's going to take a little effort. Come on. It's going to take a little effort, but after a while, what happens is your mind begins to, to, to train and say, okay, okay, I got this, and it'll get easier and easier. And so I just want to encourage you today with this, that you need, it's time to reset. Like God wants to do something so amazing in your life, but he can't if you're thinking about those things. But you've got to make up your mind today. Say, i got to make up my mind. i got to make up my mind when it's late and everyone's asleep. Come on trying to go to sleep and you're tossing you're turning and uh, you start getting that wonder in mind you know and the enemy starts telling you oh what are you going to do about that huh that's hard man I don't know and he starts, starts filling your brain with a bunch of mess the middle of the night automatically you've got to learn if you've got to get up get your word out so do it or maybe 
you just call on the name of Jesus and just say, Jesus, and sometimes we're going to get reports that we don't want to get. We're going to go to the doctor and we're going to find out things that we, we're like, where does this come from, right? Girl, I didn't see this coming. How many of you have gone through things in life? I didn't, I didn't see this coming. This is not what I expected. This is not what I planned. I just, I just want to encourage you today that we've got, we've got to fight back with the full armor of God. We gotta, we gotta fight back and we gotta make up our mind. You know what, I don't have to live like this. Better yet, when I think of Romans 8 and not living in condemnation, I start thinking about this. I start thinking about the greatest reset. You know what the greatest reset was? When Jesus Christ got on the cross and gave his only one and son. Come on, for us. That was the reset. He already redid it. He died on the cross. He overcame the cross for us. He's reset it. He's reversed something in you. All we got to do, ladies and gentlemen, is make up our mind. Which way are we going to go? Are we going to think of the things of the world? Some of you need to get rid of some people in your life. Come on, I talk about it all the time, but it's so important. Sometimes it's people we care about the most, but we can't listen to that garbage. We can't and expect to feel good. We can't. And then they leave your house, and all you do is constantly think thoughts, right? Then your mind goes back to something that happened, and then you go back further than that. And you got to get rid of that garbage today. Let's clean it out. Let's get rid of it. Hey, kids, we're going back to school. Let's start from the, hey, we're the parents, man. Let's, let's get it straight. Let's start speaking life over them. Let's start teaching them how to fight back. They feel down. They're scared about something. Hey, you don't have to feel that way. Let me tell you what God's word says. Let me tell you what hyped up Pastor D says Sunday. Let's go. We got to lift our heads up and know who we serve and understand the God that he is. He ain't a God of fear. He's not a God of worry. He's not a God of all that. He's a God of peace. And he's a God of love. And he's a God of second chances. And he wants you to make it. And he understands what you're going through and he knows that you're hurting and he knows that it's hard and he knows that that everybody tries to oh shake it off and it's not it's not that easy and I'm not up here to say that it is because I don't know what you're going through I've not experienced some of the things that some of you guys have experienced but what I have experienced is his love and what I have experienced is his grace and what I have experienced is miracles that he's performed in my life and so all I can do is simply let you know watch what you think about man Watch what you put on on the TV. Watch what you listen to on the radio. I'm telling you. I mean, watch it. Because that mess feeds in your spirit. And then you go to work grumpy. You don't understand why. What are you thinking about? What have you allowed to come in? Man, we're just opening the door like, come on. Come on in. Devil, have a seat. This is how I feel today. But, hey, I'm ready to fight. I say it's time to fight, y'all. We don't have to live that way, man. I don't want to get up every day and be grumpy. Some days I am. Yes, I am. And it's a good thing my husband ain't back there or my daughter. She, they'd be like, yeah, she is. But it's, it's time. We just push it aside. Say, you know what? I want to renew my mind. I want to get rid of that old mess. Get rid of it. God is good and he's gracious. Will you stand with me this morning? Every head bow. Come on. You can come down too if you want. I don't ever want to discourage that. But if you want to sit right in your seat, every head bow and every eye closed and say, Hey, Pastor Dana, I've been struggling with my thinking. I'm raising my hands. Yep, I see hands up everywhere. Yep, 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 see it everywhere. I want you to know that God doesn't want you to live like that. He, he wants to help you. He's, he's saying today that there's going to be times where you struggle, but you got to keep going. You can't give up. you got to get in the Word and renew your mind daily. So, Father God, I pray for the ones that raised their hand today. And, God, I, I just pray right now, Lord, that they would make up their mind. Lord, that they would set their mind on things of you, God. And I just pray right now for every, every difficult thing that we're going through, every, every season of life that just seems hard and seems like we can't go through. Lord, I, I just pray, God, that we would, we would put these toxic thoughts right in time out, that we would say, no, 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 I don't, I don't, I don't want to hear this. Like, I, I'm going to make this. I'm going to get through this. It is going to work out. I, I, they are going to be okay. Like, my business will grow. My church will grow. Like, it is going to be okay. Lord, we, we want to hear you, and we want to set our mind on you. So today, Lord, whatever you need to do, whatever you need to remove, we give it to you because we want a firm foundation today. In Jesus' name. Amen.